How's it going everybody? This is Eddie back at it again with Sky Saga. Yeah, you thought that just because I was playing Trove again that you wouldn't see any more of this game. Well, no sir, we're still playing. But I have been grinding on my own a lot because I just don't really know. I feel like we've experienced everything that I know there is in this game and I need to hit some new stuff before I can actually get a decent rotation of different activities to do in the video. And today we're doing a new one which is going to be the blue level worlds, which are called Fabled. We're going to do a Fabled Mastery Adventure uh, in the forest. I've been getting to that point where hopefully we can unlock some new stuff in there. They're pretty difficult, so let's go ahead and give them a shot. And of course, wait through the rather long sequence where we jump through the portal. very loud according to the letter you found in the bones of cross someone called Blexham arranged to have a death amber hidden in a fortified town somewhere near here they will they were in a desperate hurry and hid it in a barrel deep underground okay so we got to open up a barrel so I actually attempted this quest once and then like a connection issue happened and I got booted out and when I Joined back in, I was back on my own own world there and not in the uh, adventure world, so I kind of missed out on that. Oh, and we're running very low on arrows. So that was unfortunate. A um, couple things I'm noticing playing this game after getting back into Trove. This game kind of runs like shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know that's sad to say, and I know that I actually have been... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's not my recording. I... I'm not having any troubles getting my PC to keep up. That is entirely with the game. And I believe it sometimes even happens when you're when I'm not recording. Um so that's unfortunate. Oh, those are steps. I thought that was gonna be a ladder. So yeah, these are hard worlds. I've got some new gear that hopefully will make it easier. Oh yeah, this mace is something I just got from an amber that is fabled tier mace. It's the first time I think I've actually been able to use a fabled tier weapon, which is awesome. Seems to be kicking butt. Another thing I just wanted to let you guys know if you guys are Sky Saga fans, or if you're a Sky Saga developer, that would be another thing I'd like to let you guys, another group of people I'd like to inform of this piece of information. Trove has recently taken away uh, any need to take basic crafting resources in an inventory. It just keeps track of what you have, doesn't matter what chests it's in, and then when you go to craft, you have access to them. Would highly recommend this system for this game. It would would greatly cut down on the amount of time I would spend in menus. We don't need to do caves today. We have plenty of um, we have plenty of uh, crystals to get back into this tier of a world, so we won't need to do that. And I don't think we're currently like if they were yellow crystals, I would say let's do that because currently I think we have about 75 yellow crystals and we need to get 100 of them to finish that quest that we've had forever. But yeah. We don't, I didn't see any yellow crystals, so we probably won't need to do that today. But yeah, highly would recommend at least doing something. You don't have to do what Trove did, but doing something to make it so that one does not have to spend so much time fiddling through chests and getting the crafting materials together to make things, because ultimately it's not a challenge, it's not a puzzle, it's not engaging, it's not fun. It's just sort of filler and in my opinion, when you have a game that's mostly dependent on repeating the similar tasks and g going through a grind, the less filler, the better. Lookout needle, huh? I don't know if I've ever come across one of these. Okay, gotta destroy five vile bandits. Come and get it. Sweet. All right, that's two. Oh, this mace is boss. So this is actually not so bad. This is kind of like playing it before. I used to play with a worse weapon on these worlds and it would be, I would almost die a lot and it was actually pretty intense. This has made it uh, much easier now that I have this weapon. I haven't even needed to really rely on my charge to 
charge attacks so much. And we do have one. Oh, yeah, but that's the thing you'll notice, and that's what makes it way more interesting, is that there's actually a, a much bigger enemy variety in these harder worlds. It's really cool. There's massive enemies. That wasn't even one of them. That was just like a, a sort of a special two-handed weapon guy. There, there are a number of those. In the early worlds, there's basically just swordsmen and archers. Maybe the occasional guy with a hammer or something like that. But I bet you there's a secret chest up there. Oh, I think I forgot to bring blocks. Oh, let's jump on these barrels. Ooh, barrels! Oh, no, this said barrel underground. This is probably not the barrel we're looking for. And we'll just try to... Secret chest. Ahaha! I think I actually have been in one of these. That's how I knew this would be here. <laughs> so much gunpowder. We have quite a bit of that, but I've never actually seen anything you can use to craft with it yet, so I bet there's some... But there's something that we need to unlock there. I have a couple of um, settlers' quests that should be easy to settle up once we get back to God, pick up every arrow. We're very low. Once we get um, back to our home island, basically just need to turn in some fabric pieces and iron plates. Should be very doable. We're going to get some more settlers' currency, which we could use to buy some important recipes for base building. Which kind of brings me to a question about this game that I've been pondering recently, which is, what is the end game look like? Uh, and that's why I've been sort of grinding on my own, because I think this is important information for the series. And I guess what I mean by that is, does an end game look like you're going to be building and then going through harder adventures? And that's it, because it's kind of just like a scaled up version of what we're doing now. Okay, I think we need to try to find an entrance here. We could just probably bust through, which might not be such a bad idea because we need blocks. All right, let's do it. Yeah, so that's my big question. What does the end game look like? I would hope that there would be some other mechanics in there. Um, like, for example, mm, I don't know, different kinds of adventures. I will tell you that the environment has certainly changed quite a bit in my adventures. I once was at a nighttime adventure that was like kind of covered in a big, thick haze that made it really difficult to see and had some enemies in it I had never seen before. So that was really cool, um, but beyond that sort of aesthetic vibe, everything was more or less the same. Now, I may have goofed with this game because it certainly seems like they're trying to push a storyline in all of these major quest lines that I straight up didn't pay attention to. Normally I do listen to storylines, but uh, I didn't for this one because I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't think that it was gonna be a big part of the game. And I didn't really think that it was all that engaging to read little blurbs of text. Um, and as it turns out, I think that maybe that was supposed to be a bigger deal than I thought. The developers certainly seem... Do you think there's hidden stuff? Oh, hello. I have dire tidings. I received a distress call from Akito, one of, the, one of Agni's team. They were looking... For for the final death amber and well his car was interrupted before he could let me know exactly what happened so i'm worried oh, okay there's a there's supposed to be a chest here do you think it's up there i kind of think it might be should we do it let's do it like this because we still need more blocks oh it's kind of dangerous though don't want to fall down so maybe i should start paying attention more to these stories but i don't know couple things about stories in this game and a couple critiques of this game in general that have become more apparent going back to playing a game like Trove. I'm not trying to say one's better than the other, I'm just pointing out some differences and in this case I'm pointing out some differences that I think Trove um, does better. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of things that this game does better that Trove does not do as well and I'm sure we're, we'll get into those at some episode in the future but um, something that Trove does uh, is oh, oh man don't fall please don't fall 
Is, is the chest up here? No! It was all for nothing. How are we gonna get down? Little parkour, little parkour challenge. Something I, I think that Trove does a little better is it, um, screen usage. So reading these stories, I think it would be best, honestly, if they were voice acted, but I understand that that uh, adds a lot of challenges to the development and a lot of cost to pay voice actors, and I don't blame them for not necessarily doing that, um, you know, during the alpha. But I do think that that would be best, because that was something that appealed to me about the old, whoa! The old Republic was how much effort they put into their voice acting. Um, but maybe it's not too crucial for this game. One thing I do think is crucial is that they don't have tiny font and a tiny blue block, blue box towards the bottom of the screen. When dialogue is going on, for the most part, um, regardless of whether or not I'm in an adventure world or the city of first light, I'm not going to start dialogue if I'm in a battle or I'm in a position where I can't afford to take some time to read or at least click through it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a scratchy throat today. <clears throat> ah, okay. Yeah, so if, if I'm going to go ahead and... and um, sorry, I had a scratchy throat. Sorry, if I'm going to... Sorry, I had a scratchy throat there. Um, if I'm going to take the time to read uh, some dialogue, I'm going to make sure I'm out of battle first. And I'm able to actually click through it and maybe read it or maybe just maybe just click through it. And so if that's the case, putting much bigger font and ooh, I haven't heard this music before. That's very cool. Oh, a shield. Oh, I guess we have we already have a shield. I'm just not using it. <laughs> so they could take up much more space and have the things be much bigger and um, it really wouldn't be a problem. They don't have to worry about blocking the rest of the screen. But it, as of right now, it's like a tiny little thing that I don't really want to read. And it, it, it doesn't encourage me to read it because it doesn't actually draw my vision even really. Whereas if it came up in the front of the screen with big text and said, you know, just a, 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 the same amount of dialogue, maybe slightly, you know, the same amount of words, I would say. You don't want to have too many words. But similar amount of words and just I could just get the idea and skim it much easier and click through it and then it would be fine they don't have to worry about not blocking the view of the screen because you're not doing anything during the dialogue anyways um, and I think a similar thing could be said for crafting menus there's two bars when you're on a crafting workbench of things that you can craft and the rest of it holds this blank space that only is populated if you click on a thing and uh, actually need to look at the recipe for it but why not have there be the entire pane available for clicking on um, things like you know the the entire the current crafting menu here let, let's defeat this enemy and I'll give you a better idea of what I'm talking about And open up the chest too. All right, so let's pull up this. I think it is. Yeah, it's two bars, two rows here, and then you page through. And on some of the things, there's I already have like three pages, and I haven't even really done stuff. This is dead space, and uh, I think I have my UI scaled down. So I I would critique on how how you know they could take up a much bigger amount of the screen with this. But in I think for most people, it, it already does do that. Um, but why not use every this whole window here for recipes? And when I click on something, just another window appear here that has the crafting recipe. Because I'm not going to be crafting in situations where I don't need, uh, where where I need to make sure that I can see what's in front of me. I mean, I think this is something that Trove figured out pretty early on that. Um, you know, people are basically doing two, one of two things. They're either going through a quest or an adventure in preparation and for and f for resource gathering, or they are, uh, you know, doing stuff in the menus relating to crafting or upgrading your 
person or something like that. And so they designed their UI to actually exist towards the center of the screen and take up pretty much everything. Or maybe if you're going to be dealing with your character information here and your craft and your inventory information here so that you could like craft stuff and equip it they have two things taking up pretty much half the screen each and it's totally fine to do that because I would not be fighting a boss and need to do that I would not be running around a map and need to pull that information up so it's fine to take up the whole screen that was a pretty long-winded and repetitive way of making that point but that's how I feel um, then that's an area that I think that this game could probably improve quite a bit on. Um, Alright, we're here at the boss. Oh my. Whoa! Just got totally launched up there onto that barrel. Actually, wait. I wonder where the. Search the death amber in barrels in the M chamber. Okay, so we have to defeat, destroy these barrels. That's a new kind of quest. Okay, let's hold this up and try to get a charge hit in. Nice. Didn't seem to do too much damage. Okay, we're getting picked off by these archers. Ooh, wow. Right in the face. Oh, that didn't even damage him at all. Um, yeah, basically that screen real estate and inventory usage combined with the way the game runs, sometimes with some low frame rates and stuff, I would say are two things that really hold the, the game back from just enjoying what's already here, but... Uh, yeah, I need to figure out what these do big big thing. It must do something like I feel like I should be able to Emblem of nobility, I, maybe I'll try to look that up on a wiki. So how do I do this? I probably have to take out my pickaxe And then see what are we looking for again? Oh Fractured death amber quest complete So now we have to go bring this back the world. I don't I don't think there's gonna be a chance of us getting another one. And I think this might be it. Oh there's a there's a red barrel. Yeah. Okay. Alright, well let's open up this big chest and then we'll see what's going on in the uh, rest of this world. Let's see if oh there's another Another amber. They're taking a long time to undo, though. All right, let's open up the map, see if we totally missed anything. It looks like we mostly got everything. I'm sure we could go back. Do we have any secondary quests? We do not have any secondary quests. All right, let's head back to the city of First Light and do some turning in of the quests. All right, here we are in the city of First Light. I think we only are going to have the one quest to turn in because we didn't actually managed to make much progress on some of the other quests but that's fine we did that and next one things have taken a dark turn i'm afraid i must insist you equip a full set of fabled armor before i allow you to continue i simply will not risk any more of my people okay so that's two new recipes um a fabled so i think we've slowly been accumulating recipes for fabled tier gear here and I think now we should be good to go and the hope is I think that we should be able to craft some of these and then once we yeah here we go basically we just have to equip better shoes because that's the only thing that we didn't um, didn't have uh, and we'll go I'll go dump this in the chest later we don't actually have any amber that is unlocked yet they're all five hours or so before we can unlock it so that's unfortunate, but um, I'm wondering, I'm thinking, this is my prediction, I'm making a prediction about um, when we enter the beta, because I believe in the beta, uh, the idea is for them to finally start monetizing the game, and it's been a big question for people about how will this game be monetized, because when the big release happens, we should expect an influx of players, and um, you know whether or not they stick around may be related to how monetized this game is if they have to pay a lot of money to do everything and if it becomes kind of like pay to progress kind of situation uh, they may not stick around so it's a big question and my guess is that one of the things that we'll be able to do and possibly we could we could do already maybe I just don't know how to do it but if we could go here and do a little micro transaction this is my prediction do a little micro transaction to uh, just eliminate the timer on these things 
that would be that would be one way to monetize it that I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind that but I, I'm guessing that's what some of them will be all right but that's gonna be it for me for now thanks for being an awesome audience I'll see you guys in the next one bye bye <laughs>